Hey everybody, uh, for those of you who saw it in the past, I did a review of the Mi Electronics AF32 Bluetooth headphones. Well, they have a new uh, set of headphones out, part of their AirFi series, and it's these guys here. It's the Venture Bluetooth headphones. We're going to take a look, compare them to both the old AF32s as well as other Bluetooth headphones kind of in its competing class. So let's take a look and see what we think. So the Venture headphones are part of Mi Electronics' new AirFi series. These are a Bluetooth headphones, um, included everything that you need in the packaging. Packaging is pretty nice. You get a uh, charging cable, which is mini USB, and you also get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is male at both ends. We'll kind of get more into the headphone cable a little bit later. You also get a very soft, nice kind of velvet-like material drawstring pouch that the headphones go in. So those are good for just keeping away scratches or nicks or bumps when it's in your bag, but just remember that it's not actually a hard case, so it won't really protect it from major falls or if you stack a bunch of stuff on top. So just be aware of that, just be careful. You don't want to put your heavy, you know, 17 inch laptop on top of on top of your bag. It might, might not fare well. The ear cups actually fold flat. They kind of rotate inward and that makes it easier to slip inside the pouch and to carry it. These are a full size headphone, so keep that in mind. These aren't gonna slip into your pocket or anything like that, but if you're going for a full size headphone, you're obviously aware of the limitations size wise, but they'll obviously fit fine in a backpack, messenger bag, purse, you know, whatever you're carrying with you, it'll work. Just not necessarily your back pocket or anything like that. The overall design of the headphones is actually really nice. Uh, it's mainly just obviously plastic um, with a sort of, I guess maybe a vinyl or faux leather padding uh, around the top portion and the ear cups. There's actually a really good amount of padding across the top, so it's pretty comfortable. The outside of the ear cups kind of have an angular, almost I call it like sort of a stealth fighter looking shape to them with sort of contours and angles, which I actually really like. It's a little bit of a different design. And I also like that the headphones are all entirely black. I think there's a big trend nowadays for doing all kinds of multicolored headphones, which are great if you really want to get noticed. But if you just want a pair of headphones that are a little bit below the radar, the all black works out really well. It's very nice and traditional. And sort of that under the radar approach carries through with, as I mentioned, that sort of stealth fighter looking angled uh, design on the outside of the ear cups. The headphones are of course adjustable. You can extend the two arms out. I wish there was a little bit more adjustment. I have kind of a large head apparently because when I extended them all the way, it just barely fits so that the ear cups are fitting well onto my ears, but a little bit more extension would have been nice. So if you do have a large head or a lot of hair or anything like that, just kind of watch out for that. Or if you're wearing a baseball cap, they might not fit over the baseball cap, just depends on your size of head and what all you got going on up there. But I would have liked a little bit more play in the arms. On the left cup is the power button, volume up and down, and the microphone for whenever you're making your phone calls. You also have the 3.5 millimeter jack when you want to use it as a wired headset. And we'll get more into the wired feature in a second. On the other ear cup, you have the track forward, track back, and player pause buttons, as well as a little flap that covers the mini USB charging port. The mini USB port is actually something that I like because with the AF32 headphones, it was charged via a mini USB to male headphone like 3.5 millimeter jack. So that was sort of a proprietary cable, not too commonly found, which meant of course, if you lost the cable, you were kind of in trouble. So I like that this one is just a mini USB. That's a very easily you know, found cable. It's very easy to accommodate if you lose it or if it breaks or anything like that. It's not micro USB, so just be aware that most, for example, Android phones, law devices are actually micro USB. So you're not going to use that one. It's the mini USB that phones used to have. Blackberries used to have it. The first generation of Android phones used to have it. So uh, they're still around. It's not anything that's obsolete or anything like that. And you can definitely get them very easily if you lose this one or break it. So talking about the 3.5 millimeter audio cable. One of the nice features of these headphones is that they're Bluetooth. You can use it for Bluetooth audio streaming and phone calls, but you also have a cable so that you can plug it in. The benefit for that is, of course, if the device you're using doesn't have Bluetooth or if your batteries on the headphones are dead, you can just plug it in and you're ready to go. 
Another benefit is that inherent with Bluetooth, and it's nothing specific to this headset, but just Bluetooth in general, sometimes when you hit play on your media, whatever the device is, there could be just a tiny bit of lag from when you hit play to when you start picking up the audio. So for me, for example, I was using these headphones with my laptop paired over Bluetooth while I was doing editing. Well, in editing, I'm hitting play, pause a lot, so I kept getting these little kind of drops in audio until it really kind of kicked in. So in those situations, it was nice to have the option I'll just plug in and it functioned completely like, like a traditional pair of headphones. But then if I was gonna just stream a movie, stream a TV show, do anything like that, watching Netflix, Hulu, on my laptop, on my mobile device, tablet, whatever, I could just turn on the Bluetooth, pair it up, and it was ready to go. When you're using it as a wired headphone, you can also keep it paired over Bluetooth. Now the Venture headphones favor the Bluetooth connection. So if you're wired in, and you receive a media input via the Bluetooth, like let's say you hit play on your Pandora on your phone, it will mute the wired audio and start playing the streaming audio over Bluetooth. Once the Bluetooth audio stops, it takes about 10 to 20 seconds, it switches back over to whatever the audio input is from the headphone cable. So it's nice to have that, similar, that uh, versatility to go back and forth. The first time you charge the headphones, you can expect it to take a little bit longer. I think they recommend somewhere between three and six hours. But after that first charge, it actually drops down to about two to three hours per charge. What's really great is that once it's fully charged, you can get up to 18 hours of use out of it. That depends a little bit on the volume. So of course, the lower the volume of the headphones themselves, the longer the battery life will be. But still, even at max volume, you're gonna get a ton of hours with this. So it's great for the weekend warrior. Someone wants to throw it in their bag, hit the road for a couple days, chances are you won't need to recharge it for an entire weekend of heavy use. So it's really great. And again, if the battery dies, just plug it in and use it as a wired headphone or charge it through a readily available mini USB. Either way, you're all set. To pair the device, what you do is just hold down the power button and then you just wait and there's actually audio cues. It plays a little voice that tells you that the device is on or that it's in pairing mode. So you'll from off, you'll just hold down the power button until the light starts blinking and you'll hear the voice say pairing and then just go to whatever your device is, whether it's your mobile phone, your Bluetooth enabled laptop, switch it into uh, make it discoverable and then the headphones should pop up. Pairing was super easy. I paired it to multiple devices and it always paired up very easily, very quickly. And whenever I was turning the headphones back on for the next use, it always had no trouble finding the last paired device and just connected right away. When you use the volume buttons to change the volume on the headphones themselves, if you're playing media, the volume buttons change the volume of the headphones themselves, not the device that the media is being streamed from. So it won't change the volume on your phone, it changes the volume in the headphones. So if you max out on the headphones and it's still not loud enough, you can then raise the volume on your device. This is something that has more to do with just Bluetooth standards rather than like anything with this specific pair of headphones. Now the weird thing is, and again, this is more of the Bluetooth standards, when you're in a phone call and you use the volume buttons, it will adjust the phone volume on the phone itself. But media, it's separate. There's the headphone volume and the device volume on the actual physical device. I actually really like this just because what it means is that I can get even better fine tuning. I can have my device set at one volume, maybe 75%, and then from there on the Bluetooth headphones, I can still move it up and down a little bit just to really tweak it and get just that right volume that I'm looking for. Uh, apparently in future iterations of the Bluetooth standards that the devices are gonna use, the headphones will control, the future headphones will control the audio levels on the device itself when you're streaming media. Making phone calls on it is fine. I had no problems. The other people were able to hear me fine. I was able to hear them fine. I would say it still wasn't quite as good as a really, really top end noise canceling earpiece. But that being said, it's definitely adequate that if you're using it and a phone call comes in, you have no problem just uh, switching over, making the phone call and then going back to your streaming media. It's really handy for that. 
So what is the final verdict after all this? Well, in the end, these are really, really great headphones. I really enjoyed them. I found them to be really comfortable. They cup the ear nicely. And while they're not actual noise canceling headphones, just having a good seal around the ear still does a lot to really isolate the outside sounds and really get you to be able to hear the sound coming from the headphones. They have very clear, good bass. Everything was clear. I never had any issues, whether I was on wired or Bluetooth, the quality was always good and taking into account also the flexibility of the wired or Bluetooth at this price range, I think it would be pretty hard to find anything with this level of flexibility. I was using it uh, wired, hooked up to my cameras when I was shooting out in the field. I was using it wireless to stream media. I was plugging it into my laptop when I was editing. Um, these definitely very quickly and easily found a place in my daily rotation of of tools that I use, whether I'm shooting, editing, just listening to content or whatever. These are great headphones. Um, just, I'm, I'm really, really happy with them. And I definitely recommend if you're looking for something in the 150 and under range, which usually you can even find these uh, more discounted than that on places like Amazon and things like that. Uh, you cannot go wrong with the Mi Electronics Venture uh, AirFi headphones. Thanks a lot for watching. As always, be sure to click subscribe. We'll keep up to date uh, on all of the future reviews. If there's any devices that you want to see reviewed, leave a comment below. I'll try to get uh, to all the comments as best as I can. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.